Hi, Captain Users. This is Rob Jan, one of the uh, ambassadors for the project. And I'm really excited about Captain 0.14 and to show uh, one of the new features that we've been waiting for around triggering sequences. And for that, I'm going to turn over a demo to Elizabeth Lang, who's one of the UX developers on the Captain side. Elizabeth, all to you. Um, you can already trigger sequences from the CLI, but the idea was to make it a bit more user-friendly and to have the whole feature in the bridge also. So basically what we, what we wanted to build is a form that takes in all the values that you also can give to the CLI and then just um, yeah, conveniently start a, a sequence from the bridge. Um, yeah, a user story, as you can see, is uh, basically what is the goal of the story. And I added a lot of stuff in here because I also did the mock-up for um, the story. So maybe we can also take a look at that. So um, this is so, basically so what, 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 what tool are you using, Elizabeth, to build these mock-ups? Uh, so I use Figma which is okay. really great for doing stuff like that. So you can do wireframes with it. And what I will show you now is uh, you can also link screens and create fully clickable prototypes, more or less. So this is not implemented yet. This is just a mockup and I can also already interact with it. So this is what it is based on. Um, and yeah, I wrote all the special considerations for developers already also in this story so that it doesn't get lost because uh, in the mock-up you cannot tell everything right i remember i remember you did know. a couple mock-ups too because uh you know during the uh you know the development you said here's option one here's option two and you got some feedback and i, I found that that mock-up was really helpful just to right you could interact with it even though it wasn't executing something but you get a sense of the different look and feels. Yeah, there you yeah. go. All right, variant one, variant two, perfect. Yeah, exactly. So I, what I tried is basically more or less a really small user study because I was not entirely sure if we should um, include it. Like um, I already showed it here. So the idea was either to include it in the direct link to the page. I think this is also the same here. Yeah, exactly. And the second, um, the second option was to have it in like a pop-up. Um, so I will show you if it loads. Yeah, so that this yeah. Yeah, just so shows totally up. Different. Totally different, yeah. yeah. And I was not entirely sure what was the better option. So I did this short poll in, um, yeah, in, just in this issue. And I think the results were, um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, so everyone liked the yeah. in, the in, in page. So that's that's a great yeah immediate feedback. Uh, yeah, that's great. I love that. Yeah, and I think I was one of the people that liked the I liked I liked the inline as well. So I was one of those ten. I think if I remember right. Yeah. That's great. Okay. I think, yeah, I think um, yeah. This is a lot yeah, of so feedback I, also I came in from ideas. you. <laughs> um, I was like, I was put I was put put buttons everywhere. Like I I want a button. I want to trigger. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, right. and we will definitely consider some of these, but uh, yeah, we had to build the space feature first. And right. yeah, if you want, I can already show it to you because yeah, let's see so it. I have this now on my local installation, so uh, it's more or less for uh, 0 014 and a bit more because I have it on my master branch. But, anyways, the feature still stays the same. So as you can see in the environment screen, there is this trigger new sequence button as you already saw in the mockups. And also if you go to sequences, it's here. So if I click here, you're rerouted to the environment page again. And there you have now the option to trigger new sequence. You can either trigger delivery sequence, an evaluation sequence, or a custom sequence. Um, I, I will explain what the custom sequence is later when I get to the demo for it. So um, delivery and evaluation is more or less the same as you used uh, from the CLI. So what you have to do is to select a service you want to uh, trigger delivery in, for example, for cards. And you can also select the stage. So if you want to trigger this delivery for the whole pipeline, just select the first stage. 
So if I put this in and click on next, I have now the option or the option I have to define the image and the tag, and I can optionally define which labels go in for display purposes and also values that are used for the Helm chart. So this is then passed to the Helm service and the values are processed by it. So I will just do it with, oops. Right, so those form fields are specific to the delivery sequence. Uh, that's a built-in sequence of, of Captain, correct? Yeah. So, so in, in other words, image and tag is not required for tr triggering every sequence, correct? It's just this, this, yeah, star, well, this type. For the delivery, it's necessary, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for the others, uh, yeah, okay. you'll probably demo those ones, but yeah, so that's that's yeah. where it, right. And I think that's where it's flexible, right? Because you had if you have an evaluation, which maybe you'll show that requires different parameters, where this one has things like the image and the tag that are required. Mm, exactly. Very right, great. Yeah, I'll just yeah. put in this our cards example the tag I want to deploy. Uh -huh. I can also use. 33 and just for them purposes, because I usually don't use it. Um, I just added label here that we can see that it's also added to the, to the sequence then. So I cannot trigger it. And you're redirected directly to the sequences screen. The sequence already started. And as you can see, the label is also here and it will run through as usual. So this is a really, this is a basic delivery sequence. Perfect. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and I see the I see I get my button again on that page. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's great. So if you want to trigger, for example, so let's go and yeah, trigger cool. an evalu evaluation. <laughs> yeah. Also, so I can do this also for the services uh, I have defined in my environment and also for every stage. So let's go and do it for staging, for example. Um, for time frames, I have the option to use a time frame or to use a start and end time. So here, um, for the evaluation for the time frame, if you don't put anything in into the fields, it will just um, take default values. So I described it here. Um, if I put not anything in, you will evaluate five minutes uh, from now. So this is also what is just done by the CLI, more or less. Um, you can also use a start and end time, but here you have to put something because otherwise it would be very weird. <laughs> and yeah, you can just select it like I wanted from today at 12. And, and uh, today at, so I have to think. Yes, I, yeah. yeah. Let's this, take this 13. Great. Yeah. Because normally you'd have to put this right in the command line request or in a JSON file and send it as a send event yeah, and trigger exactly. these sequences. So yeah, this is, I'm really excited about this because <laughs> it's, <laughs> just, it's just more natural to want to, you know, be able to run it in a, in a, you know, on demand from a user interface. So yeah. Yeah, that's, I, I'm loving it. I think it's a great improvement for, for Captain. Um, what you can see here now is that it's UTC timestamp, but there is already a ticket for improvement to show a bit more of a human readable date. So this yeah, will that, definitely yeah. come. That yes, I'm, always, the... I'm always having to uh, <laughs> translate. <laughs> yeah, I, I forget. I think it's Epoch Time. There's a website where I always go to and have to uh, figure that out. And then I, and now I've saved a Unix command yeah. to like automatically build that for me. So yeah, so I would agree that would be helpful. Yeah, it's, it's always a bit confusing because I mean, in was Central Europe time and it's always one hour minus. Right. Exactly, and, and then there's time yeah. zone. So like, I know you're in a time zone. I'm not in a time zone. I was in a time zone change. Now we're not, but hey, it's if, if you didn't hear, America is now almost about to pass a United States bill to eliminate the daylight savings time. So okay. hopefully- That's great. <laughs> Hopefully that'll one country down. <laughs> hopefully, all right. Anyway, yeah, we're waiting. We're waiting for that yeah. in Europe too. But let's see if that happens. All right, maybe they'll follow so, up. So, so you can follow our lead, and then maybe America can follow the the lead of having the metric system, right? So, 
Yeah. So I, I wish we had the metric system <laughs> like you guys. <laughs> it's so much easier. I still can't yeah. do ounces to pounds and all that. <laughs> all right, so let's fire the sequence. Yeah, I will just trigger it. Uh, we can also take a look at the evaluation part. I think it should be in here. And yeah, as you can see, start and end date is right. defined as right. we put it in. Right. And if people don't know the time frame, the right Elizabeth said it defaults to five minutes, but you can do things like, a, a, you know, an hour. Correct, Elizabeth. Like there are yeah. there are little shorthand ways you can do ten minutes. So that's a very that's also a convenient thing because it's just yeah, you you know, can, give me the last five minutes or the last hour or day you, you or can, whatever. Yeah, put in just five or yeah. so that the minimum is one minute. So you have so if you have like fifty seconds, it will tell you that it's not valid. Right. But yeah. otherwise, um, yeah, you can also put one hundred hours in if you want. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, some, yeah, exactly. I mean, depending on what you're evaluating, it may, makes sense yeah, right? to, exactly. to, to look at something like that, especially maybe like, yeah, so perfect. Okay. But I just put in one hour and 50 and we started now because I wanted right. to know it. Right. And, and so for people that are watching, it's not, <laughs> it doesn't take an hour to run it. What it's doing is it's looking either for your time frame or looking for from now backwards an hour. You know, so yeah. it's, it's it's so it does. You don't have to wait an hour. It's gonna just it's it's really defining the time frame in, in two different modes, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I see it fail. Okay, we maybe have to look at it because it's my my um, information from core was that the, we can put it anything, but yeah, let's well, reevaluate this. That's why we're it's not it's not production yet. So this is a yeah. No, it's not production yet. So, yeah, this, so is this is good that we found that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So third one, custom. Custom. So um, if you maybe know the tutorials from for Captain, there is, for example, this delivery direct sequence, which you can trigger. Um, you can, uh, for example, so for cards, you can let's stay here for production. And yeah, then you can select all sequences that are defined in the shipyard file that are not delivery and evaluation. So I can also trigger, for example, rollback or rem remediation if necessary. Let's just, I don't know if, if I have it correctly configured to be honest in my environment, but which you can just try because Otherwise, the sequence will fail anyways. So um, if the configuration is not. No, I get um, it. Yeah, that's fine. No, I think that's that's good for people. You know, this is where we're starting to show people, um, you know, especially in a different topic around web hooks and things like that. So people typically define their own custom sequences. Um, and that's just the term we call it. So if it's not one of the built in sequence types, like an evaluation or delivery, then it's. It could be whatever, as Elizabeth said, in your in your shipyard file, you can actually define one to many individual sequence files, and that drop down will show up. Sounds like automatically by parsing your shipyard file, um, similar to the uh, the webhook page, where you can you, yeah. where you can see the ta uh, the tasks as well on the on the webhook page. But yeah, there you go. So you've rolled uh, run the rollback. I rolled back production, for example, and. Yeah, so I would also ask anyone that uses the custom sequences, if you find anything that, as, uh, especially if here is missing, that you need some additional fields or something, that would be very helpful feedback for us to improve this. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, one thing that I've done, um, again, because I build it in the JSON file, I can, actually specify um, the first task attributes. So if my first task mm -hmm. was deployment, I can put in there, you know, like the deployment, pre-fill in the deployment attributes, and then that will get passed yeah. on. So that maybe if there is a free form field for, you know, specifying a little JSON to be passed in, to be, you know, to be mm -hmm. added in, that might be an idea. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so overall, this is great. So this, so this is coming out in in uh, Captain fourteen, correct? 
Yes, should be. Uh, so I don't know the exact date. It should be, re be released in the next few weeks. Yep, that's great. So if people yeah. watching the video, be sure to watch the general channel of Captain Slack. This is usually where I watch it. So you can see they make mm -hmm. announcements. Hey, it's it's available. And uh, this will be one of the features. And there's a it, it maybe show. Uh, I, sorry to put you on the spot. So where when when releases like this come out, there's a re, is there a release notes area? Um, is that also I think that's on the captain on the captain. Repo, yeah, it right? should be. So, so might as well we'll show people that if you have releases. Found this. Yeah. So yeah. So on the on the main repo, it's Captain Captain, and then right each. Um, yeah. Each each release Just comes out with with a little header section there. Yeah, for exactly. So the there are the, the releases on the right side and. For everyone, we have the release notes. For example, for this one, it's just there were just bug, bug fixes. But for the major releases, let's scroll down a bit. Yeah, there we have it. Um, our new uh, is also described new uh, features and announcements. So right that you can yeah, stay great. informed. What's yeah? It's new. Also, I, I usually read them because sometimes I'm not always on the re recent one. So it's nice to read. You know. And then see all the links. So that's how I think I found Elizabeth is is I, I saw the the issue that I was interested in, and I I I I realized that she was the developer contributing code, and so this was great. So Elizabeth, thank you so much for the demo. I think people will be very uh, very excited to use it and try it and give you feedback. So thank you. Yeah. For all your hard work. You're welcome.